What's going on guys, it's Brian from mtmmix.com and today we're going to be going over 5 tips that you could bring to your home studio to improve your mixing environment. So tip numero uno, and that is sit in the correct mixing position. There's so many people out there that have poor posture, whether you're working at a desk job, whether you're on your feet all day, but you come back to the studio and you're, you're slouched over, you're leaning back, you're not in the right mixing position. And what I mean by this is your head, your ears should be in an equilateral triangle with your monitors. So you wanna have uh, one set of monitors here, one set of your monitors here, and they should be the same distance between each other as they are with your head. It should all be equal sides of that equilateral triangle. And by doing this, you'll get the proper uh, stereo image of what you're mixing, and you'll have a true stereo image of what you're mixing as well. Um, doing this, you won't get anything uh, more heavy on the left side compared to the right and vice versa and this will give you the the clearest sound of what you're mixing and won't and nothing will be perceived differently uh, in any other listening situation it will essentially replicate what you're listening to if you put on a set of cans or headphones um, so that's definitely tip number one sit in the proper mixing position and that brings us to tip number two number two tip number two and that is Orlex Mopads or a comparable product. What these are are the, these thick pads that go underneath your monitors that should now be in the right position compared to your head, uh, circa tip number one. But uh, you're gonna be getting these pads that go underneath your monitors. What that does, it eliminates any desk rumble, uh, any frequencies that travel through the desk, it kind of keeps a true image to what the monitors are meant to put out of their speakers. Having them just on your desk, uh, like a wood desk or anything like that, will introduce frequencies that you don't necessarily want to hear. So these uh, Mopads, as they're called by Oralex, they will eliminate those frequencies. And in my opinion, this is one of the best investments you can make, on a budget at least. Uh, they do such a good job and you actually do notice a very big difference when you're just jumping over to these mopads compared to if you just had them on your desk or a stack of books or anything like that. Very good investment. That's tip number two. I'm going to leave the link for the uh, link for those mopads by Oralex in the description. There's a ton of different comparable products though so don't feel like you have to get those ones. But if you do it's an affiliate link so I get money. Tip number three, that is check your mix in different headphones. If you have multiple headphones, definitely listen to it in all of those different headphones. Uh, and what I like to recommend doing is taking breaks between each thing, uh, whether you're listening on monitors, headphone pair A, headphone pair B. Uh, definitely do those in shifts. Don't do an entire mix with one set. I hate that. I did it a lot, and it really kind of... Uh, messes up your mix in my opinion. I like to do start my mix on my monitors after about 20 minutes I'll switch over to my Sennheiser uh, HD 240 I don't know the name but my Sennheiser headphones and then after about 20 minutes on those switch it over my Sony headphones 20 minutes on those I'll usually take a break at that point honestly and then I'll probably after my break hop back over to my monitors Sennheiser Sony's break monitor Sennheiser Sony's break say that 10 times fast so that's usually what I'll do what I also recommend doing is checking your mixes on a pair of like Apple ear pods or something that an average consumer will definitely have that's a very good way of checking your mix to make sure that when it is in the hands of an average consumer it translates clearly from your studio uh, insane insanely expensive setup to the consumers not insanely expensive setup. So checking on a pair of consumer headphones is always a good idea as well. Uh, Beats are another one, they're a little more expensive, but a lot of people have them, especially if you're making some tracks that people will bring to the gym with them. Definitely a good tip. Tip number four is going to be possibly a little expensive. Uh, I'll give you an, a different option in case you don't want to have this uh, more expensive option. 
and that is to listen on a different set of monitors or have two pairs of monitors. Uh, very similar to tip, tip three, except now you gotta go out and buy a second set of monitors. But what I did, and what I think a lot of people actually do but don't take advantage of, is they'll have a second set of monitors from when they upgraded their monitors uh, maybe a couple years ago. They have those old monitors that they had that they were using in the beginning, kind of toss in the back of their closet. They're not doing anything with them. Set those back up, put them next to your big monitors. It'll actually even make your desk look cooler because now you have two sets of monitors on there and who doesn't want that? Uh, when I first started mixing, I actually kept my second set of monitors on my desk even though they weren't plugged in just because it looks cool. Uh, it was good for the pictures, right? So that's definitely a big tip. If you can't afford a second set of monitors, I would recommend bringing your laptop or uh, MP3 bounce of whatever you're working on put it on your phone and go check the mix in a car, um, in, your, in your car, in your parents' car, uh, whatever car you have accessible, and check that mix on there. That's another, uh, it goes back to the last tip, uh, check on a consumer level. So you always want to check your mixes on a consumer-based uh, stereo system, headphones, car stereo system, and that will give you a true translation of what your mix will sound like. And last but not least, tip number five. Tip number five, mix in mono. Mixing in mono is a really big one. Uh, I never did it, I'm not gonna lie, probably for the first five years, maybe, that I've been mixing. Um, it's something that I always just look past, something that was sort of a hassle, but honestly, mixing in mono makes the biggest difference. The coolest thing about mixing in mono, you'll hear tons of different frequencies popping out. You'll be able to check phasing, which I can make an entire separate video for, but phasing is a very big issue that a lot of people aren't aware of. Um, it's when frequencies are essentially canceling each other out, sine waves are canceling each other out, and you're losing a whole piece of audio information that you don't want to lose. So. Definitely check your mixes in mono. You might come across situations where you're mixing, mixing in stereo, you'll fly, you'll switch over to mono and you'll realize that, boom, out of nowhere all your strings are gone or uh, your doubles on your vocals are gone or your snare seems thinner. And these are all things that you wanna, mi you wanna fix when you're mixing in mono. So definitely check your mixes in mono. There's a bunch of uh, plugins in there that you could switch between mono playback and stereo playback a lot of interfaces now have it built in with buttons now so that's cool too but definitely check your mixes in mono the coolest thing about this is a lot of times you'll be mixing a mono you'll forget all about it but then you'll go back to switch it back to stereo and it's going to sound insanely huge and big uh, and the reverb is going to sound really lush and it's just going to sound really good um, and that's exactly what we're going for in the end anyway. So those are my five tips that you could really implement immediately. Some of them cost a little bit of money, but for the most part, they are very budget friendly. I'm gonna leave links for everything that I discussed in this video down below. So definitely check that out. If you have any questions, leave it in the comments. I hope you guys like the new setup. Uh, I'm really excited about it. This is just paper, as you could see, but uh, it's meant for photography apparently, so it works. But if you have any questions, leave it in the comments below. I'll be happy to answer. And until next time, guys, I'll talk to you soon.